were born before the wind Also younger than the sun Section 1.3 is on similar figures. So what are similar figures? Similar figures are shapes that have, well, they're objects, I suppose, that have the same shape, but they have different sizes. So these are, it's an example right here, the picture. Uh, I did the best I could to make these the same shape as each other, but obviously they're different sizes. Um, now, with similar figures, their vertices can be paired so that well, first of all, let's talk for a second about this word, vertices. What are vertices? Uh, this comes, vertices is the plural of vertex. Okay, so when it talks about the vertices of one of these shapes, uh, it's all these points, right? These are all vertices. One of them's a vertex. That's a vertex. That's a vertex. That's a vertex. But all of them together are all called vertices. Let's actually name this. Let's call this A, B, C, D, E. And we'll call this one F, G, H, I, J. Okay, so what's true about similar figures is that their vertices can be paired so that corresponding angles are equal to each other. So, for example, angle A in the first shape here, which angle does that correspond to in the other shape? That corresponds to angle F. So, angle A must be equal to angle F, if these are similar, and I've told you that they are. Angle B corresponds to which one? Angle G. So, angle B is equal to angle G. Should I go through and do all of them? Wouldn't that be fun? No, let's not do that, etc. Okay, it's the same with all the different angles. Uh, also, corresponding sides, I'll put etc. there, corresponding sides are proportional. So what am I talking about there? Okay, let's look at one side. Let's look at this side here. Do you know what the name of that side is? That is AB. So if I took the length of that side, AB, and what side corresponds to that one? FG, right? Whoops, should be straight. If I took AB and divided it by FG, I would get some result. I don't know what it is, but I would get some result. And when I say the corresponding sides are proportional, what that means is if I was to divide those two sides, I would get exactly the same answer as if I took this side, BC, and divided it by this side, GH. So in other words, BC divided by GH. I don't know what that equals, BC divided by GH, but it's going to be exactly the same as what AB divided by FG is. Same with CD divided by HI. They're going to be all the same, etc. I'm not going to write them all, but it's all like that. Um, oh, by the way, I could also have, instead of done AB divided by FG, I could have done FG divided by AB. Now, would I get the same result? No, obviously it'd be different. It'd be the reciprocal, wouldn't it? It'd be, you know, flipped over. Uh, in the first case, if I took a small one and divided by a big one, what kind of number would I get? I get a decimal. In this case, if I took FG and divided by AB, I'd get a, a number greater than one. And it'd be the same. If I did FG divided by AB, it'd be exactly the same as GH divided by BC and the exact same as HI divided by CD, etc. So I'm not saying that this is the same as this. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying if we divide it in this order, all the ones up top here would be the same. If I divide in this order, all the ones on the bottom here would be the same. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if you want to show that two shapes are uh, similar to each other, there's a very simple symbol to use. This shape here can be called A, B, C, D, E, and this shape here can be called F, G, H, I, J. You name a shape with its vertices, and to show that they're similar to each other, you just use this little swoop like that, a curve, a wave, whatever you want. This means is similar to. Okay? Um, that's that. I don't know why I've left all this empty space here. I should have moved these pictures down because it's so cramped in there. Sorry. Good luck getting all that on your piece of paper. Okay, scale factor. 
Scale factor is the ratio of corresponding sides. So remember up here when I talked about dividing the length of AB by FG, and I said I don't know what that amount is. Well, however much that is, that's what the scale factor is. Um, yeah, there's a formula for scale factor. The scale factor is equal to the size of the image, or the drawing, or the model, or the map, depending on what you're talking about. And you divide it by the size of the original object, or the actual thing, or the real thing. Okay, that's what the scale factor is. And just to get this out of the way, scale factor does not have units. It's just going to be a number. Um, gosh, should I do this? Now, one thing is, here it's hard to figure out what the scale factor is, because we don't know which one's the object and which one's the, which one's the image. Let's just say, I'll try to do this quickly, let's just say that this is our original object, and this was our image. And we wanted to know the scale factor when we took this original thing and then we redrew it like this. Well, the formula says we take the size of the image and divide by the original. So we want to take any one of the corresponding sides. It doesn't matter. Let's look at the red ones here. If I took a ruler, I think I do have a ruler here, but it'll probably take me all day to uh, figure out how to use it. I'll try here. Oh boy, I shouldn't do this probably. I'll put it here and then I have to turn it. Oh, not bad. That didn't take too long. So if I look at that, it looks like it is approximately 5.6 centimeters, okay? So I'll write that down, that it is 5.6 centimeters. Now, if I measure the corresponding one, it is approximately 2.567, about 2.8. Okay, so let's write that down, 2.8 centimeters. So if I want to know what the scale factor is, I take, maybe I'll just write this down here, scale factor equals size of the image, the image that was 5.6, and I divide it by the size of the object, which was 2.8. And if you take your calculator and you do that, you'll find that the scale factor is 2. What does that mean? That means that this shape here is twice as big as this one. That's what a scale factor of 2 means, twice as big. Now, if we did, looked at a different um, side, we'd get exactly the same thing. Of course, we get different numbers, but it'd still be 2. So, for example, if I looked at this one, I'm not going to write this down or anything, but if I looked at this one, it looks like it's about 4.4, .4, and if I looked at this one, it looks like it's 2.2, .2, and 4.4 .4 divided by 2.2 .2 is 2, and it worked. And we could do with any one of the corresponding sides, and you'd always get the same scale factor. Okay, but what if I um, did it the other way around? What if I was actually told that this was the object and this was the image? Well, in that case, the scale factor, you might want to write this one. You might want n not want to write both. It might confuse you to have this written twice, um, but I'll just show you. You would take the uh, size of the image, which is 2.8, and you divide by the size of the object, which is 5.6, you obviously wouldn't get 2 this time, you'd get the reciprocal of 2. You'd get 1 over 2, or 0 0.5 if you want. Alright, now let's take a look at that. The first case we looked at was when um, the image was bigger. This was the image in the first case. The image was bigger. And that's called an enlargement, when something gets bigger. What do you think is always going to be true about the scale factor when you have an enlargement? What kind of number is it going to be? Well, it's going to have to be bigger than 1. What about if it's a reduction? That's when it's smaller. This is the second case. If you started with this big one and then you redrew it smaller, that's a reduction. What do you know about the scale factor? It's got to be less than 1. Like in this case, our scale factor was 0 0.5. That means it's half as big. The one we drew, the image, is half as big as the object. Okay, there's two things I didn't write here. What if the scale factor is 1? Well, if the scale factor is 1, it's exactly the same. Right? That would mean that the um, the object and the image are exactly the same size and shape. So it's not too interesting. Those are actually called congruent objects. Uh, and the scale factor can never be zero or a negative number. That just doesn't make sense. And remember, no units. All right, let's get into some questions here. It says that Tim draws a picture of his cat. The cat's actual length is 66 centimeters, and Tim's drawing is 12 centimeters in length. What's the scale factor of the drawing? Okay, what you want to do with all these questions with scale factor is you want to remember that, this is the most important thing, this thing I put in the box here, it's size of image over original. 
image over original. So I'm just going to write like that, image original. Okay, we look at the, what was the, the image or the drawing or the, okay, the actual, uh, Tom's, draw, Tim's drawing is 12 centimeters. Okay, so the image or the drawing or the model or whatever is 12 centimeters. The original or the actual is 66 centimeters. Hey, centimeters on top, centimeters on bottom. I can get rid of those. I'm left with 12 over 66. You could divide them both by 6 and get 2 over 11. Or you could actually divide 2 by 11 and you get 0 0.18 repeating. Okay, so we have a number less than 1. Does that mean this drawing is less than the actual cat or bigger? That means the cat drawing, the drawing is actually less than the real cat. And that may, that, you know, that's probably right. Most people when they draw a cat, they don't draw it bigger than the actual cat. It, you know, it's possible if you're doing a billboard or something. But if you sat down and drew a picture of a cat, it's probably smaller than the real cat. Okay, next. A drawing of a tree is 10 centimeters tall. If the scale factor is 1 over 300, then what's the height of the actual tree? Uh, okay, so again, scale factor is equal to image over object or actual or real or something. What did I put last time? I'll put image over actual. Is that what I wrote last time? Last time I wrote image over original. Sorry. Uh, okay. Well, this time we know the scale factor. The scale factor is 1 over 300. So instead of writing scale factor, I can write 1 over 300. That's what the scale factor is. We must know one of these two things, either the image or the actual. So where's the other piece of information? Right here. There's one other number, 10 centimeters. A drawing, so a drawing, is that an actual tree or an image? That's just an image. So that 10 needs to go up, and the image spot needs to go up here. This is what we're trying to find. Hey, remember how we can solve this? I know there's all sorts of ways you could solve it, but you could use the cross-multiplying thing we've done before. Look for your diagonal, which you know both numbers. It's that one. And so what you'll do is x equals, multiply those, 300 times 10, divide it by 1, and you get 3,000. 3,000 what? Well, since it was in centimeters here, it's also centimeters here. 3,000 centimeters. Hmm, it's right. I don't like that answer, though. If I asked you how big a tree is, you wouldn't tell me it's 3,000 centimeters. You would probably give it to me in meters. So one thing you need to know is that one meter is equal to, think of a meter stick, how many centimeters are in it? 100. So you need to switch 3,000 centimeters to meters. How do you do that? Well, believe it or not, if you don't know how to do that, you could use a proportion again. Remember, proportion is when you set up two fractions, just like this. So how could you do that? Well, you could say to yourself, I know that one meter is the same as 100 centimeters. In this case, I have 3,000 centimeters. Where should I put that? Down here, because that's where the centimeters go. And now I could cross multiply. I'll put y here. So here's the diagonal. I know them both. 1 times 3,000 divided by 100. You end up with 30 meters. We just switched it into meters. You probably didn't need to do that. You could probably just look at 3,000 centimeters, and with this information in the box, you would know you just divide by 100. But I'm just showing you that cross-multiplying, or rather than saying cross-multiplying, let me say setting up proportions is a very, very powerful tool in mathematics to solve questions. Okay, triangles JKL, which is the whole triangle, the big one, and GKH, which is the small triangle, are similar figures. Find the missing length X. Uh, with these questions where you have one triangle nest nested inside of the other one, it's often easier to redraw the triangles separately. So here's the small triangle. That's pretty bad, but that's K, G, and H. And then the big triangle, I don't know why I drew it so far apart, but I did, is K up here, L down there, and J there. Let's label what we know. In this first one, we know that this distance from here to here is 6, so that's this. We don't know this distance, so we can't put anything, and we know that this is x, so that's good. Okay, in the very big one, we don't know this distance. We know this is 15. Now be careful. A lot of people, when they do this question, especially if they don't draw it, the, the separate drawings like this, they think that this side of the big triangle is 4. But that doesn't make sense. How big is the whole thing, actually? 10. It's 4 plus the 6, so it's 10. This is 10. Okay, we got to figure out how much is this side right here. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the uh, corresponding sides, and again, you can just set up a proportion. 
In the small triangle, this side, GK, GK, is 6, and that corresponds to this side, JK, which is 10. And whatever that scale, remember, that would be a scale factor if you, was to actually, if you were to actually divide that. It has to be exactly the same, since these are similar figures, that has to be exactly the same as these corresponding sides. So in other words, it has to be exactly the same as X over 15. Make sure you put X over 15. If you put 15 over X, it's wrong. How did I know to put the X on top? Because I started with the small triangle, 6 from the small triangle over the big triangle, 10. So when I do the second fraction, I also need to start with the small triangle over the big triangle. It doesn't matter if I'd done it the other way around. I could have gone 10 over 6 and 15 over X. It would still work. You could even, a lot of people do this when they set these up. They, you could even do it this way, 6 over X. Just can look at those two sides in this one triangle. Or is equal to 10 over 15. That'll work too or x over 6 is 15 over 10. It doesn't matter as long as you use the corresponding ones. But I think this is the way that makes the most sense mathematically because then we're looking at the scale factor. 6 over 10 is the equal to the scale factor and that has to be equal to x over 15. Okay, blah blah blah, let's actually solve this thing. I'll use cross multiplying. There's my um, diagonal. So x equals 6 times 15 divided by 10. 6 times 15 is 90 divided by 10 equals 9. 9 what? It doesn't say. So you can either put no units or you can just write nine units. Finished. Last one. A flagpole casts a shadow of 28 feet. No. Yeah. A flagpole casts a, sh cast a shadow 28 feet long. A person standing nearby casts a shadow 8 feet long. If the person is 6 feet tall, how tall is the flagpole? Okay. Math drawings, remember, are very, very simple. Here's my flagpole. There's a shadow 28 feet long. Okay, so lots of time when people think of um, shadows, they think that this is a shadow. No, shadows are actually on the ground. That's the shadow. Um, okay, so what do we know? We know that the shadow is 28 feet long. This is 28, not this. You don't see in, like a strong shadow in the air like this. You see shadows on the ground. Um, we don't know how high the flagpole is. That's what we want to know. We want to know this. There's a person standing nearby, probably shorter than the flagpole. And the sun makes a shadow eight feet long with that per person, and they're six feet tall. Whoops. These, um, I didn't draw it very well, but these are going to be similar to each other. When you have objects that are making shadows, you get similar triangles formed. So these objects are similar to each other. And all we're going to do is exactly the same thing we did in the last question. We're just going to look at the corresponding sides. So uh, 28 to 8, that would give us a uh, scale factor if we did 28 to 8 over 8. And that has to be equal to x over 6. And we're ready to solve this. Here's my diagonal. So x equals 28 times 6 over 8, which equals 168 over 8, which equals 21. 21 what? I want to know what this is. 21 feet. That's my answer. Um, I hope that makes sense why it's a triangle. There's like a sun up here, and the rays come, and these ones are all blocked. But this ray goes all the way to there, but no rays get down here, so there's a shadow. And it would work exactly the same way here. Ah, I, I think it makes sense, right? Okay, that's it. Um, still kind of dealing with stuff we've done a lot in grade 8 and 9. Next two days are a little bit tougher, so... Good luck with this. Yeah, when the fog horn blows, I wanna hear it. I don't have the fear that I wanna rock your gypsy soul. Just like way back in the days of old.